my name's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the HIS Radeon HD5450 1GB graphics card. What comes included in the box isn't a mass amount, you get the usual uh, bits and bobs that you'd expect with any graphics card really, there's no extra uh, games included or accessories. I mean you do get a DVI to HDMI adapter, you also get a multi-language quick installation guide, a graphics card driver uh, installation CD, though we do recommend that you go onto the eTechnics.com website and download the latest ones. That will clear up any compatibility issues, driver issues, anything like that. For some reason, they also include this uh, PCI bracket, but I'm not actually sure why, because it's got exactly the same connections cut out on this bracket as the one that's actually on the graphics card. And of course, you do get the graphics card itself. Taking a look at the top of the graphics card, straight away we can see that it's actually quite a low profile card. It's not very big from the front to the back and sort of even the height of it is quite small as well, so it's, it's quite low profile overall. The VGA side of it you can actually uh, take out, there's a little plug here which obviously you could pull and that will disconnect the VGA. Then it's a matter of just unscrewing it and that whole bit will actually come out. Now taking a look at the underside of the card, we can see that it sports this sort of bluey green turquoise kind of colour PCB. We can see exactly where the memory chips are, and it's got a couple of stickers including the serial number, as well as the four points where the heatsink is held on from this side. Looking a little bit more at the cooling, we already spoke about the underside of the card where we could see the four points of contact for the heatsink, and up here we can see the four points on the top. It's a black heatsink, it's got a sort of fin design, and it does come over the memory as well. So it's quite a nice little low profile design, and of course it sports the HIS logo. Being a passive cooler, it means there's not going to be any noise, and we do know that the 5 Series cards are mainly focused on using little um, power, and this card is no exception. It uses very little power, so that means it generates very little heat, and that's why you don't need a fan on here. You generally find that with a graphics card that does have a, a fan, because it's quite a small card, it needs quite a small fan, and they can be quite sort of noisy and whining, and after a little while they do decide to pack up, so it was a good idea that they went with a passive design for this uh, graphics card. Taking a look at the full specifications on this graphics card, it has a core clock speed of 650MHz, has 1GB of GDDR3 memory running on a 64-bit memory interface. The memory clock speed is 1334MHz, it has full HD 1080p capabilities as well as the DisplayPort DVI to HDMI support. It also uses OpenGL 3.2 and Shader Model 5 technology. It's compliant with the latest DirectX 11 support and has a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600. As you can see, looking at the graphics card and how low profile it is, if we just have a quick spin around it, we can see that there's nowhere for a PCI Express power adapter to be because it requires just little to no power. Obviously, requiring little to no power means that it requires uh, little heat being dissipated from it, hence why it's got this low profile uh, black heatsink instead of a fan. The bus type for this particular graphics card is PCI Express 2.1. One thing you will notice about this graphics card is normally where you'd expect the Crossfire uh, configuration ports, there isn't any. This card does support Crossfire but obviously in a software Crossfire mode, but that all depends on your motherboard. Being part of the 5 uh, series graphics cards from Radeon, we see that they go from sort of the 5450 all the way up to the 5970, which is the, the power hungry dual GPU chip. Being a 5450, we can't stress enough that it uses little to no power, it dissipates little to no heat, and that it's more of a, a budget card or more so, sort of aimed at the HTPC market. It is obviously going to appeal to a lot of people who do a little bit of light gaming, someone who wants to play something like World of Warcraft, Guild Wars, something that's not massively intense and that you can turn the settings down on. Because it is quite low profile, which we keep stressing in this review, it only takes up one PCI slot in your case. Taking a look at the various different connections on this card, we can see that it has a VGA port, which we already spoke about can be disconnected from the actual PCB over here. It also has a display port and a DVI port. And remember, this does come with the DVI to HDMI adapter. As we can see, it has got three different connections, which is perfect for ATI Affinity. I've got to admit, with these 5 Series graphics cards from ATI, I, I'm just loving the new technologies that they've come out with. You look at the 5970, the, the greatest graphics card on the market at the moment. Dual GPU, it's got DirectX 11 support, it also has ATI Stream technology and ATI Affinity. So does this card. Even a budget card has these fantastic technologies. DirectX 11, obviously that means that we can play the latest games with some of the most outstanding graphics like 
uh, Battleforge from Electronic Arts or Dirt 2. Albeit, you won't be able to play it at the best quality with this graphics card, but you're still going to be able to play them and notice the difference between the older DirectX 10.1 technology. It also has HUI stream technology. This basically means that it's going to balance out the GPU and the CPU. Uh, obviously, this takes a lot of load off of your CPU, and it means that you don't have to buy the most expensive processor on the market with hyper-threading. Instead, you can go for a cheaper variant because the graphics card's going to do a little bit more work to, to balance it out. It also has HUI Affinity, which we did speak about with the free connections on the back of the card. HUI Affinity is something that HUI developed Instead of uh, a customer going out and buying one sort of 24 or 26, 30 inch monitor, HUI believe that you'll be happier with three smaller monitors. It could be uh, 19, 20 inch, but they do believe that by having three monitors, you will be more immersed into the game when you're actually playing and you'll get an overall better gameplay. This is the part of the review where we talk about price, value for money, bang for buck. And we did manage to find a very good price on this graphics card at £40.56. Uh, that was from Yo-Yo Tech. It's very good value for money considering what you get. But we did have a little look around and this card wasn't massively available, but we did manage to find the Sapphire equivalent, XFX equivalent and Asus equivalent for quite a bit cheaper. So I don't know what's going to sway you more to buying the HIS one over uh, any of the other brands, but that's the price that we found for it. is aimed really at the HTPC user. As you can see from the benchmarks, it, it performed okay. Uh, we did have some problems with 3D Mark Vantage on the higher resolutions, the 1680 by 1050 and the 1920 by 1200. We had to run the test a couple of times. Even then, it's not a completely accurate result because it did flare up a few errors. It's a nice card. It's got DirectX 11, it's got stream technology and the flexibility for ATI Affinity. I'm not quite sure why they included the same size bracket with this particular card, I don't know whether it was a mess up at the factory, uh, but it's there anyway. I, I do have a problem with, with the price. Um, it is va fantastic value for money, but I still can't find a reason as to why you'd buy this one over the cheaper um, ones from sort of various different vendors. So I have to give this card four out of five stars.